that is <clears throat> my view this morning of my breakfast here while looking out at this. It's, there's so much vegetation. But this uh, giant boat, they are <laughs> parallel parking this giant boat right now. <laughs> and this pyramid structure. That pyramid structure is definitely fake. Yeah? <laughs> I think so. Uh, 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 uh. There's no way. Just for tourists? I bet it's just for tourists. Good, Good morning, morning from, from Mexico. Mexico. We're Madison and Ivan. In today's Mad Venture, we are finally back in one of our absolute favorite countries. So if you've been following along, last year we spent a month in Cancun and three months in Mexico City. Absolutely loved it. Great eats, great sights, just wonderful time. But one place that we really, really wanted to go to that we didn't make it to when we were living in Cancun was Bacalar. We have heard from friends that the lagoon there is one of the most beautiful places in the entire world. It has a lot of history involving pirates, and I've been wanting to explore it for so long. So today, we are going to hit up some Mayan ruins and then head there, and I cannot wait. So we are on the cruise Scarlet Lady right now with Virgin Voyages, and it has been absolutely incredible. I've been on cruises in the past with my family, and we usually book excursions through the cruise ship, and today we didn't. So there's a little bit of fear about like, are they gonna get us back in time? How is this going to all work? And it's more our speed, you know? Like yeah. we're, we're going off the beaten path a little and exploring it in, in kind of our way instead of in a, a crowded <laughs> yeah. tour. And the cool thing is that means that no matter, like if you are coming to Costa Maya on a cruise ship, no matter which cruise line you are on, you should also be able to take this excursion. Sure. There are several excursions that went to ruins and went out to the lagoon, but this one, it takes us out on the lagoon in a motorboat in the middle of the lagoon, stopping at these cenotes and different places, you know, going through the Pirate Bay. We're gonna get to see like every single place here of like significance. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too, sorry. <laughs> Whew. It's a heavy camera, guys. You gotta work out, y'all. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo! Also man venturing with us today is our friend Zach. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Ahora nosotros solamente habla español. Muy bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? Uh, está bien. Ah, arriba. Comida. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Zach's first time in Mexico. It's so hot already. First order of business is adjusting to this heat as we walk 15 minutes past all the gift shops to get to the meeting spot. Duck egg! Duck egg! You made it! Woohoo! You made it, you're here! We connected with Octavio, hopped in our car, and immediately began to learn. For starters, Costa Maya is just the made up name of the port. The real town that we were in is Maha Hual, named after the trees. There are lots of pineapple plantations in the area, so to help us recover from our walk in the heat, our tour guide took us to a pineapple stand and bought us the sweetest, most delicious pineapples of our lives. Okie dokie. We made it. Welcome to Chuck Chauvin. Muchos turistas aquí. Muchos turistas aquí. Exactly. Uh, what it is, Chuck Chobin. Chuck Chobin. Okay. Chuck Chobin is translated in English. That's the plate. Okay, ah. press The earliest settlements here date back to around 200 BC. Chuck Chobin consists of four grand temples, a market, and a residential area. But there's still so many buildings still to be discovered buried under the vegetation here. Chuck Chobin reached the peak of its power between 600 and 900 AD. The first temple we came to was called Temple 24. Like all Mayan temples, its architecture was based on astronomy. This temple was built from stones that are not local to the area, so they would have been carried all the way from Guatemala. Ooh. That's a good workout. Yeah, they got they got like that knee high lift. Yeah, I got it. Oh wow! Next, we've come to this massive, beautiful temple, Temple Number One. 
This temple is aligned so that the first rays of sun at dawn on the solstice shines through the top and onto an area where it is believed a statue would have once stood. Temple 1 is for the sun and this temple is for the moon. It is super cool here that you can see the remains of the red color that would have once covered all of the temples. Next, we've explored the residential area. While we've done some self-guided tours of ruins in Mexico before, with Octavia, we are learning about more than just the buildings. We are learning about Mayan writing, math. Four points representing number 19, five, 10, 15, 19. But when they start with the number 20, they always jump in into the level systems. And their uses and beliefs for the trees around us. This tree was known as the Tree of Life, with 13 branches representing the 13 levels to heaven. And this soft cotton-like stuff it produces was used for textiles. Muy bien. Trabajo. You can't talk about the ancient Mayans without talking a little about human sacrifice. And our last stop on the tour was the altar. Decapitation, told you how our life is where normally happen in these areas. Any volunteer? Mm -hmm. Wow, it's an honor. Yeah. I feel like, Zach, your first time in Mexico getting sacrificed yeah, yeah. seems like a good yeah. story. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Zach refused the honor of being sacrificed to the Mayan gods, so he headed to the car and on to beautiful Bacalar. Made it to Bacalar! <laughs> Okay. What is this? <laughs> this is known as Seven Colors Lagoon, and where the color changes drastically right here is the beginning of Cenote Negro, the Black Cenote. Cenotes are limestone sinkholes. And right here where the color changes so drastically, the sinkhole begins and the water depth goes from three feet to around 300 feet. Next, we drove over Cenote Esmeralda, which is known for this incredible navy color. Not quite black like Cenote Negro, because it's only 230 feet deep. This truly is one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen in my life. The water is incredible. Next stop, the Pirate's Channel, a canal believed to have been dug by the Mayans that connects this lagoon to other lagoons, then a river that takes you out to the Caribbean Sea. This was a route taken many times by pirates who ransacked the town. This is so beautiful. The colors and depth of the water vary so much, even just in this small area we're exploring. There are areas that barely cover our feet, and some that are 15 feet deep right next to each other. <laughs> it's also super cool to see the mangroves here. In Florida, we saw mangroves in the murky swamp water of the Everglades, but here they are growing in this gorgeous crystal clear paradise. We are at a spa, basically. We like walk on the moon. It is kind of pretty vibe. cool. It is one small step for man. Yeah. One giant leap for Zach's first time in Mexico. <laughs> Woo! Mexico! Mexico! <laughs> It's so fun. Talking about. Mexico! Use a 
of sand from the lagoon. Oh, do not exfoliate with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, don't do not exfoliate with it. This boat-shaped structure was meant to be a restaurant, but the plans were never approved so the project was abandoned. And now, it's a pretty fun place to jump into the water. <laughs> Leaving somewhere this gorgeous is never fun, but what is making this more bearable is the promise of tacos. Zach's first tacos in Mexico. We are headed to Taco Loco. Off to a great start. We have six different salsas to sample and some agua fresca. I even got tamarind and I got horchata. We got cochinita pibil and shrimp tacos. Zach's first tacos in Mexico. And they absolutely hit the spot. So delicious. We made it back to the Costa Maya port with lots of time to spare, but made sure we could see the cruise ship just in case. Apparently people being left behind by their cruise ships is something Zach watches often on TikTok, so we were a little paranoid about it. As we wandered through the extremely dense crowds of other cruisers around this ridiculously commercial area, I thought about just how incredible our day had been. Booking a tour through a local company rather than a cruise line had gotten us a private tour. We got to dive into so much history, nature, and delicious food, and all of this wrapped up in one quick day. And now it's back to our cruise ship home, which if you missed our past two videos, we have talked all about it, so check it out. And if you haven't cruised with Virgin Voyages before, definitely check those out because it is incredible. Today has been amazing. We highly recommend the excursion we went on, so we will link that in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us for this adventure. We will be headed to the Florida Keys in the next couple of weeks, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, join us on the next one, and until then, remember to live your own adventure.